So I'll say up front, I think this is going to be quite a big video, and it's because I'm just squishing all of the graph transformations into one big video. So I'm hoping that if you remember these, you can move on along with the assignment, but this should be a really good overview um, for these function transformations. So first we're going to start with vertical shifts. So what I have over here is a table of values as well as a graph. And what we're doing here is we're adding a value on the outside of our function. So plus four or minus two. So what we're doing is we're taking each y value and we're adding or subtracting that number. So if I go to just the table here, I have my x values, but what I'm gonna focus on is taking these outputs, the so seven, 10, 13, 11, nine, and what I'm gonna do is bump them all up by four. So that would give me 11, 14, 17, 15, 13. And when we do that, let's go ahead and take a look at what happens to our graph where we keep the same x values, but now I have these new outputs. So going over to the graph where I had negative 3, positive 7, now I'm graphing negative 3, positive 11. And where I had 0, 10, now I'm at 0, 14. And there, and there, and there. So what this resulted in is a shift upwards by four units. All of our coordinates moved up four. So when we're adding on the outside, we're moving up, and then whatever number we have, that's telling us how many units we're moving up by. So now let's do the same thing, except we're gonna take those same outputs, that original 7, 10, 13, 11, 9, and now we're gonna take away two from each of them. So that would leave us with the 5, 8, 11, 9, and 9 minus 2 with a 7. Okay, so what we're going to do is graph our x coordinates along with those new y coordinates. So we'll have at negative 3, we're going to have positive 5. At 0, we're going to have positive 8. And there, and there, and there. And what we're going to be seeing with this graph is that with that transformation, what we did is we ended up moving down two units from that original graph. So that moved down two. So this is where it's vertical is moving up and down and we're shifting up and down where we're just picking up the graph and moving it. So for a vertical shift, what we have here is y equals f of x plus k. If k is positive, we're moving up. If k is negative, we're moving down. So we look for something adding or subtracting on the outside of our function. For vertical stretch, now what we're looking at is where we are multiplying the outside of our function. So we have two times g of x and a half times g of x. So let's see what happens to our function when we do this. And we're going to do this with two separate graphs here. It gets a little too messy if we try to do it on the same graph. So y equals 2 times g of x for our first graph. And then we'll look at our second one. So here what we'll be doing is if it's just 2 times g of x, we're just multiplying our outputs by 2. So we have these outputs of negative 2, 6, 6, 0, and negative 2. And what we're going to do is double each of those. So we're going to have negative 4, positive 12, positive 12, 0, and negative 4. So let's see where these end up on our graph. So what I'm graphing here is my x-coordinates matched with these new y-coordinates. So we have negative 2, negative 4. We have 0, positive 12. And we have 4, positive 12. 7, 0, and 8, negative 4. And actually, I can add some more dots there just to really complete this graph. So what ended, ha ended up happening with this one is we stretched everything vertically by 2. So this is a vertical stretch 
by 2. So let's say we focus on that 0, 6. What I could see is we had this vertical distance of 6 before, and what we're doing is we're doubling that vertical distance. So how far we're going along the y-axis, it's stretching it up. Or on the negative side, like where we went to negative 2, instead of a distance of 2 downward, now we have a distance of 4 downward. So we just stretch all of those vertical distances, and then whatever was 0 before, like at that 7, 0, it stays there because it didn't have any starting distance. It's like if something had a height of 0, and I said double it, it would stay at a height of 0, because there's nothing to double, it's just 0. So with that, multiplying by 2 on the outside of the function stretches it by a factor of 2. Let's take a look at what happens if we take y equals 1 half times g of x. So what we're going to be doing with this one is taking all those original outputs, the negative 2, 6, 6, 0, negative 2, and cutting them in half. So it would be a negative 1, 3, 3, 0, negative 1. So let's see what that does to our graph here. So we now have a negative 1, a positive 3, positive 3, positive 1. Oh, and the 0 stays the same, just like before. So now our graph has squished down by a factor of 1 half. So where we had that vertical distance of 6 before, now it's been cut in half. Or that vertical distance of 2 is now 1. And then the zeros stay the same. So this is called a vertical compression. So this would be vertical compression by one half. So our summary is if we are multiplying our function on the outside by a number, if that value or that absolute value rather is more than one, it stretches vertically. If that value is a fraction between 0 and 1, it compresses vertically by a factor of that numerical value. Let's talk about what happens if we have a negative on the outside. If we have a negative on the outside, in fact, actually that would be easy enough to add to this table. Let's say I made negative g of x a line on this table here. So what we'd be doing is taking each of those y values and multiplying by negative 1. So negative 2 would become positive 2. Positive 6 would become negative 6, negative 6, 0, positive 2. So what that would do to my function is whatever was graphed as negative before now graphs as positive, and whatever was positive is now negative. And then zeros stay the same. And what this ends up doing is, too far there, is reflection it reflects over the x-axis. So I'm going to take that out of there because that got quite messy, but it's just whatever y values were negative become positive and the positives become negative in terms of y. x isn't changing at all with this. So when we have negative g of x or any negative value in front of f of x multiplying, this is going to cause a reflection over the x-axis. Okay, so that's vertical. Vertical shift, vertical stretch compression. Now let's talk about horizontal. Key thing with horizontal is it behaves basically opposite of how we think it's going to. So let's take a look at this. What's going to be happening is when we move horizontally, so horizontal is along the x-axis, so the idea is that we're affecting our x values. So that's why it's happening inside our function. So we have f of x plus 3 inside of the parentheses. So it's inside the function that we're adding 3. Or this f of x minus 6 inside those parentheses. So we're taking away, a, taking away 6 from x first before evaluating the function. So it's this action that we're doing it before that kind of leads to this opposite effect. So let's take a look at this. This will be a little trickier than those last ones, but 
it'll be good to see the whole construction of it. So if I want to evaluate f of x plus 3 in parentheses together, and I'm looking at x equals negative 6, what I need to think of is this is the same as taking f of, sorry, I need smaller pens here. Okay, f of negative 6 plus 3, which is the same as f of negative 3. Well, with our table, we already know what f of negative 3 is. When x is negative 3, f of x is 7. So what we're doing is we're grabbing that output of 7 based on how we changed x. Then our next one will have f of, and now we're at negative 3, but we're adding 3, so this is really the equivalent of f of 0, which the output at 0 is positive 10. f of 0 plus 3, so really we're looking at f of 3, which that output is 13. So we're just grabbing these y values from a different spot is what's happening. Then f of 3 plus 3, which is 6, and we see our output of 11. f of 6 plus 3, which is 9, which our output is 9. And f of 12, which they're telling us is undefined. And then at 12, we would be out at f of 15, which isn't included on the, or oh, sorry, it is included on the table, also undefined. The next one, f of 18, also not on the table, so we'll just say it's undefined. And we could see that from our graph too. So now we have these new coordinates to graph. So I still have my x values, negative 6, negative 3, 0, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. And now I have these new y coordinates to match them up with based on how things shifted. So at negative 6, we're graphing positive 7. At negative 3, we're graphing positive 10. And at 0, we're at 13. At 3, we're at 11. And at 6, we're at 9. And we have our new function. So what this ended up doing with the plus 3 inside is it picked up each of our data values, or sorry, each of our coordinates, and we move to the left three units. So having f of x plus 3 ended up moving us to the left by 3. And typically when we see addition, we think of positive, which along the x-axis usually matches with moving to the right. And this is what I meant by it works kind of opposite of what we expect. So when we see a plus 3 inside of the parentheses, we're going to the left. So now let's see what happens when we have subtraction, though I'm sure you can guess, but let's just see the full construction. So f of, and we're at negative 6, but we're going to take 6 away, so really we're looking at f of negative 12, which isn't on our table, so we're just going to say that's undefined. f of negative 3 minus 6, negative 9, also undefined. f of 0 minus 6, so we're at negative 6. That output was undefined f of 3 minus 6 is negative 3, which that output was a 7. f of 6 minus 6, which is 0, had an output of 10. f of 9 minus 6, which is 3, had an output of 13. f of 12 minus 6, which has an output of 11. And f of 15 minus 6, which is 9, which has an output of 9. All right, let's take a look at this new graph. So again, I have my x-coordinates and then my new y-coordinates. So it starts to be defined at 3, positive 7. So let's see, we're going to go 3, 7, 6, 10, and 9, 13. And 12, 11, and 15, 9. I think I got those right. And what we're seeing with these is we're moving to the left, or sorry, directions would help, moving to the right, 6 units. 
So with the subtraction of 6 on x, what we ended up doing is moving to the right 6 units. So if we're given a function where we have x plus h on the inside of our function, what we're doing is a horizontal shift. If h is positive, so we're seeing addition inside those parentheses, we're moving to the left. If h is negative, which would make it look like x minus a, uh, the value, then we would be moving to the right-hand side. Okay, horizontal stretch. We're almost there because in our last thing, it's going to mix all of these together. And then we'll be all set with graph transformations. Okay. So again, horizontally, we're affecting x, which means we're multiplying inside our function. So we have 1 half times x inside the function h. We're also going to look at 4 times x inside the function h. And again, what we think would usually happen with this multiplication is actually opposite. So like where it looks like I'll be cutting things in half, I'll actually be doubling them. And then where it looks like I'll be multiplying things by 4, I'll actually be taking the fourth of things. So let's go from there. Here's my table for the graph that's to the right there. And let's go ahead and look at h of 1 half x. I'm going to do the same as up above. I'm going to go h of, and I'm taking negative 12, but cut that in half, and I have negative 6. And h of negative 6 is equal to 0. I'm going to take h of negative 8 but cut in half so I'm at negative 4 that also had an output of 0 h of negative 3 which isn't on the table so we're just going to kind of leave that blank for now because negative 3 is defined on our picture here I could go to negative 3 and see I have an output of 1 so actually I could let's just go ahead and fill that in even though it's not on the given table we can still find that value because of the graph or it's saying undefined it's because our graph isn't occurring out there like at negative eight we aren't graphing anything so it's undefined okay and negative four but cut it in half so h of negative two which also isn't included but i can go ahead and see that we're graphing at x equals negative two we're graphing at two h of zero cut in half is still just zero so that point stays exactly the same h of 2 but cut in half so we're at h of 1 which it looks like we're graphing at positive 2 there h of 2 we're given as 0 h of 4 we're given as negative 4 and h of 8 which we're given is 6. okay so our new function we have our x values and we have our new y values so at negative 12 we're graphing 0 at negative 8, we're graphing 0. At negative 6, we're graphing 1. At negative 4, we're graphing 2. And 0, we're graphing 4. So that point stays exactly the same. 2, 2. 4, 0. 8, negative 4. And 16, 6. And let's go ahead and graph this. So, ended up happening is our graph is covering more distance now. It's spread out. So in terms of horizontally, it's stretched out. So let's take a look at what happened to these distances here. So let's look at this coordinate 2, 0. So before, it had a horizontal a horizontal distance of positive 2. Now it has a horizontal distance of 4. So it doubled. And then down here at 4, negative 4, we had a distance of 4. Now we have a distance of 8. So what this ended up doing was a horizontal stretch by 2. So if we're multiplying by 1 half on the inside, we end up using the reciprocal, so really it's a stretch by 2. So let's see what's happening when we multiply by 4 inside. I'm going to clear out my graph there just to keep the visual nice. Okay, this is going to be interesting. 
So h of negative 12, but we're multiplying by 4, so that's a negative 48, which is not on our graph. h of negative 32, also not on our graph. h of negative 24. So I have a lot of space that I'm not even graphing anything. Let's see, h of 0, we're good, which multiplying by 4 is still just 0. Uh, let's see, h of 8, we're graphing a positive 6 h of 16, and we're undefined again. So I have two coordinates to graph with this, and that is it. But we'll be able to see kind of what's happening, especially with that coordinate 2, 6 is what we'll be graphing. So when we're at 2, we're graphing positive 6, which is the end of my function all the way out here to the right-hand side. So what I'm seeing here is where we were going a distance of 8 before, now we're going a distance of 2. So it got divided by 4. So what I could do is look at this with the other distances. Like down here I have a distance of 4. Divided by 4, I would now have a distance of 1. Here I have a distance of 2. Well, now my distance would be a half. Where I had a distance of 4, it would be 1. Where I had a distance of 6, it would be 3 halves now, so 1 and a half. Oh boy. So, the graph becomes teeny tiny. Like that. It squishes in. It compresses by a factor of 1 fourth. So, with that 4x, this is a horizontal compression. by one-fourth. Made it real small there. Okay, a little last thing here is what if we have a negative inside? What is that going to do? So again, we're just affecting the inside of our function. So if I have negative 12, I'm really looking at positive 12, which in my original function is, sorry, clearing it out so I can see my original function easily. That's undefined h of positive 8, which we know is 6, and then we're looking at h of positive 6, which we're not told what that is, but we could look it up on the graph. Looks like that's a positive 1. h of 4 is given to us as negative 4. h of 0 stays the same. h of negative 2 isn't given, but we can see that it is a positive 2 h of negative 4 is given to us as 0, h of negative 8, undefined, undefined. Okay, so when we do this, so at negative 8, we're going to have positive 6. At negative 6, we have a positive 1. At negative 4, we have negative 4. At 0, I put a 0 there, but the output is 4. It stays the same. And let's see, 2, 2, 4, 0. And yeah, that's what we have here. But we can connect the dots with some more pieces too. And it would go like this. So what we had is a reflection over the y-axis. So where x was positive before, now it's negative, and the x's that were negative are now positive. So this is going to make for a reflection over the y-axis. Okay, so right there, horizontal stretches and compressions. What we're looking for is something multiplying inside our function notation. If b is more than 1, that's actually going to make a compression, and we're going to be using the reciprocal. And then if we have our value between 0 and 1, that's going to create a stretch horizontally, and again, we use that reciprocal. So, and feel free to pause the video, take a breath, or try these out on your own first, whatever you'd like to do there. But now we're going to put these all together with our mixed transformations. So 
what we have here is we have our value multiplying on the outside. That's our vertical stretch or compression. Multiplication on the inside. That's our horizontal stretch or compression. If we're adding with x, that's our horizontal shift left or right. And then if we're adding or subtracting something on the outside, that's our vertical shift up or down. Um, OK, so if we're given this graph, what we're going to do is given the function notation, figure out what the transformations are, and then from there, we're going to graph it. So if the value that's multiplying with x is not factored out yet, we need to rewrite it so that it is. So we're going to have y equals w of factor out that 2, which would leave us with an x minus 3. And then we have a minus 2 on the outside. So the 2 multiplying, what I'm going to see there is a horizontal, and that would be a compression by 1 half. And then with the x minus 3, what I'm thinking is we're moving to the right by 3. And then with the minus 2 on the outside, we're going to be going down 2. So what I'm going to do is start by just graphing our original function here. And what we'll do is we'll go ahead and start with these um, stretches and compressions. And then we'll go on to the shifting up, down, left, or right. So what I'm going to start with first is this horizontal compression by 1 half. So if I graph my function, and let's go ahead and use units of 1 here. So my original function looked like that. Now, if I want to do horizontal compression by 1 half, then what I'm looking at are those horizontal distances. So how far are they away from the y-axis? I'm going to cut those in half. So that distance out to negative 5, positive 3, that distance is negative 5. I'm going to cut that in half to 2.5. Then where I have that distance of 1 to the open circle, I'm going to cut that in half to that kind of middle value, that peak of the w in the middle, that has a horizontal distance of 3, so I'm going to cut that in half to 1.5. And then I have this distance of 4, so cut that down to a 2, and cut down the 2 to a 1. So if I just think of moving based on that horizontal compression, I end up with that. And now what I'm going to do is, this, these next steps, I'm going to do together. So I'm going to pick up each of those points, move to the right 3, down 2. And let's do the final graph in, well, let's do it in blue. OK, right 3, down 2. So I'll go 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. The open circle, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. For the peak of the W, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. And one, two, three, four, two, and there. And that would be my final graph. And I'd want to delete those other pieces, but I'll go ahead and leave them there for so you can see the steps um, that we did to get there. Okay, our next one here. Again, we have this negative multiplying with x. I need to factor that out. So really my function is we have a negative on the outside, w times negative on the inside, and with that factored out, it would really be an x plus 3. So I'm going to have some reflections here, and those are what I'm going to take care of first. So my first steps, I'm going to reflect over x, reflect over y. So reflect over x, reflect over y. And then, after I take care of that, then I'll focus on my next step, which would, if it's plus 3, that would be moving to the left 3 units. Okay, let's get our original function. Okay, 
So reflecting over x, it's where I'm at y equals negative 3, but now I'm going to be at y equals negative 3. And then when there's x equals negative 5, now it's going to be x equals positive 5. So we move out there. And then how about that 4, 1 would now be a negative 1, and then it would be a positive 4. And then the middle peak of the w is at 3, 2, then it would be negative 2, and then positive 3. And then at 2, 1, but now it would be negative 1, but a positive 2. And then at 1, positive 3, it would now be a negative 3, and then move it over to positive 1. So with the reflections, our graph moved there. And then we would move left three, so my open circle there. Closed, closed, closed circles. And that would be our final answer. Okay, one more drawing, and then we're gonna do making the function given the graph. Okay. So in terms of stretches and compressions, I'm seeing a vertical stretch of two. And that one third X, that's gonna be a horizontal stretch by three. And then with the plus four on the outside, we're going to be moving up four units. Okay, let's get our original function. So, vertical stretch by two. So all of our distances, we're going to stretch up and double them. There, and there, and there, and there. Okay, so there's our vertical stretch by two with our open circle up there, and then a horizontal stretch by three. Three. So now we're looking at our horizontal distances. So where I had, and I'm going to need to change my axis. One. As soon as I saw that horizontal distance of five and knowing, I, knowing I'd have to triple it, I knew I wasn't going to have enough space. So what I did is I changed my x axis so that it's units of two. So that just moved things over a little bit and squished things. So I stretched everything by two vertically. Now I'm going to stretch everything horizontally by 3. So where I have 5 units here, I now want to go to 15 units. So I'm going to go 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 15. Where I'm at 4 units, I want to go 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. And then where it's at 3 units, I now want to be at 9. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 9. Whereas at two, I now want to be at six, so two, four, six. And then where I'm at one, I'd want to be at three. Okay, so there is my horizontal stretch by three. And then my very last step is to move everything up by four. So up four units. And I kept my y axis as a unit of one, just so you know. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And one, two, three, four. Connect those dots and we have it. And I'm gonna leave the video there. Um, I think that really what comes into it is us giving a fun given a function and needing to create the graph, just knowing the transformations of the function. Pretty sure this will be the longest video of the term if you made it through. Hopefully this was good review for you for graph transformations.